Ethan's posture shifts and he leans forward, eyeball almost pressed against the glass case. Suddenly, you feel a strange chill run up your spine. Absolute focus. Ethan begins to chant some strange gamer mantra. I am the mountain of... <laughs> I am the mountain of my doom. I am the chip of my Dorito. I am the cheese to my nacho. <laughs> How is it going, guys? My name is Wanzi Bidette, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Academy Life. Now, before we even get started, I have two incredibly important announcements. The first one, which is less important, is that I have been sponsored. For the first time, I've been accepted into a partnership with a company called Wraith Energy. Now, I have used Wraith for quite a while. I find that their energy drinks are honestly some of the most enjoyable out there just because they're non-carbonated and because of the fact that they're non-carbonated, they're easier to drink and you get more of the flavor from them. They also don't give you that nasty crash that you get at the end of other energy drinks, like when you're drinking a can of Monster or Red Bull, you end up just crashing at the end of it. So I've been using them for a while anyway, and I just applied on the off chance, and lo and behold, they accepted me. So if you want to try out some of the energy drinks that they have to offer, they are, honestly, I can't recommend them highly enough. Cherry and lime is my favorite flavor. Go over to wraithenergy.com and use code WANZY for 10% off. If you use code WANZY, that 10% off is amazing. My recommendation is to try out the Tallboy Shaker, which comes with a bunch of sachets. You can try your own different flavors, see which ones you like. And yeah, I've had glowing reviews from everyone who's tried them so far. So go ahead, try out some Wraith Energy and see, tell me which one you like. The other important announcement is that we have been accepted into the YouTube Partner Program. For the first time in eight years, Wanzi Burnett is making the partner program on YouTube, which is honestly, I just, I can't even express how grateful I am to you guys, because quite frankly, none of this would have happened without you, you guys. Uh, I've been trying all sorts of different content on YouTube for quite a while. It's all been Pokemon related, whether it be generic Pokemon Let's Plays, whether it be my competitive Pokemon content. I've had so many different sort of avenues and niches on YouTube and I would not be back in the partner program without you guys. Pokemon Academy Life has been honestly one of my favorite games of all time and that's kind of mad considering it's a fan game but it is honestly just I love this game to pieces and the community behind it is so supportive. The devs are incredible and I just I love it to pieces. So to Freud to all the artists to all of you guys in the comments and you know interacting with you guys is one of the highlights of my day when I get round to it because it just warms my heart to see that people are enjoying this series as much as I am playing it yeah thank you so so much for all of your support and love this would not happen without you so just have my dodgy love heart have my dodgy love heart <laughs> But the problem that this comes with is now I have been given the opportunity to offer membership to my channel, which you might find is active at this time. And I have no idea what sort of perks to even consider offering at this point, because what do you do? I'm just a very small YouTuber who's apparently now got to offer membership perks. So if you have any ideas for membership perks, if you have any ideas of... like series to go to once this is finished because I, that's a question I hate YouTubers asking but honestly I have no idea of what I should be continuing to do I just started this series as a bit of a whim returning to it and now I have no idea like what to do once this is finished do I go into generic Pokemon games and do let's plays of those do I do more fan games do I do more generic visual novels like I did with Katawa Shoujo do I go back to my competitive Pokemon content I, I'm always going to have that on the channel that's that's a staple of Wanty Burnett I'm a draft league player at heart I've, I love competitive Pokemon I have no idea where to go from here so if you guys have any suggestions or things that you think would be interesting let me know I'll plug them all into the supercomputer of my brain and we'll yeah we'll, we'll take it from there but before we even get started just a massive thank you again for every single one of you who comments on these videos and watches them i know these videos are long but the fact that there's at least two or three of you that watch them start to finish it just makes my day so 
thank you, every single one of you. You're amazing. I love you all to pieces. Without further ado, let's get back into some Pokemon Academy life. After explaining the plan to the party... Oh yeah, we were going to do the, the birthday party, weren't we? <laughs> After explaining the plan to the party goers and obtaining Dawn's consent, everyone agrees to follow Ethan's plan of splitting off and rejoining. Yellow Ethan Hill, but Shiren and Bianca will go to the fair. Leaf, May, Dawn, Hilda and Serena will go to the theatre. Which group will you go with? I want to... Alright, so part of me wants to go to the theatre, part of me wants to go to the fair. So what I'm going to do, I'd like to do both of these. I'm going to change this to... Theatre Fair. And I might come back and redo this scene later on. But for now, just because I think it would be really funny, I'm going to go to the fair. Because I think it's going to be very, very funny. The fact that we go to do the same thing as Sharen. I just think it would be so funny. <laughs> you decide to go with Bianca's group to the county fair. However, a problem soon makes itself apparent. So... Yeah, when Lofa said the county fair was outside the city, she didn't mention that it's like 15 miles out. How many cyclists are did you catch for Professor Cherry, Alex? Perhaps we could use them again? There is no need for that. I have a car. What? You've got a car? Yes. Huh. Didn't think you were the type, Charity. You're a rule breaker after all, huh? I'm clearly misinterpreting something. Oh, I get it. The driving gauge in Unova is 16! Oh, is it not 16 in Johto as well? No, it's 18 in both Kanto and Johto. Didn't have any time after high school to get my license. Came straight to Kobocon. Kind of a shame too. I really wanted a car. One of those sporty yellow ones with the open tops and gold rims. You might as well shoot a flare into a police station for as quickly you'd get pulled over driving that. A plain black car with a functioning airbag system and a spacious glove box is all you need. I'd like a pink car. Something round with a floral pattern, maybe? Hey, References upon references. Yell? Oh, I think... I think I just like a bike, really. This polite conversation is covering the very obvious elephants in the room. Are you the only one with a car, Sharan? I'm not sure. Bianca does have... Does, uh, Bianca does not have one. I know that. Hilbert? If I need to go somewhere, I... I ride in Hilda's bike's sidecar. Ha! <laughs> Shut up. Well, I already said my piece. And I don't have a car or a license. What? But you're 19, right? That would have given you a full year to get your license. I never really had a reason to either. Before Kobacon, the furthest I ever went from home was in Viridian City, and you can't take a car in there. Not without irritating a lot of wild build uh, Beedrill anyway. So it sounds like Sharen is my only option. Sharen watches you curiously. I obviously don't have a car, or a license for that matter, so I guess you're it. I'm not going to drive us into a ditch. I'm sure your driving record is impeccable. You've no idea. Explain, then. I have no idea how to continue this repartee. I was stating quite dryly that my record has no blemishes. I've never even had so much as a parking ticket. Wow. The head of the disciplinary committee follows rules. Big shocker. More at 11. Keep that up and I won't give you shotgun. What? You can't do that. I called it. Actually, I call shotgun. I suppose my hands are tied, then. Let's go. My car is parked behind Phobos Hall. Phobos? It's the staff's dorm. Named after an alumnus and a wealthy donator, supposedly. You're allowed to park in the staff parking? Besides, Instructor Surge is cheap. I'm not sure if any of the other staff members even have vehicles. Pokemon are the typical method of locomotion for our school's faculty, sensibly. Okay. We we'll go riding in the car. Okay. <laughs> Ah, here we go then. Let's load up then. Oh my god. Ah, uh, Look at Yellow. Why does Yellow look taller than Hilbert? <laughs> Why is she taller than Hilbert? <laughs> oh god. There. Everyone comfortable? Seatbelts on. There's only room for five people in this car. Guess someone's gonna have to sit on my lap then. Nonsense. 
The trunk folds up into another set of three seats. I wouldn't load this car past capacity. Damn. Run, Shadowfax. Show us the meaning of hastes. Someone's a Lord of the Rings fan. Shren pats the steering wheel affectionately. You named your car Shadowfax. I did. So why is it white? Oh my god, Hill and Brand. You can't, you can't just ask someone why their car is white. You're from South Africa, right? So why are you white? <laughs> oh, I fucking love Mean Girls. It's a valid question. It's more of a silvery grey, I think. Really? I thought so too. No, it's white. It's... So what are we all gonna do at the fair? I appreciate the change of topic, but please remember your seatbelt, Bianca. It's alright, I'm bouncy. Granted, but that doesn't make you exempt from the law. I think maybe if they have one of those fishing games, I might try that. I'm really good at fishing. Well, real fishing anyway. Jeff, <sighs> those games are all rigged and chance-based to boot. Skill means nothing. I'm going to stuff my face with cotton candy. Did you know cotton candy is actually pretty low in calories compared to how much of it you eat? What? It's pure sugar, right? A couple teaspoons of sugar could make an entire tub of cotton candy. You're paying for sweetened air. Well, I'm planning on riding one of those roller coasters, which, oh god, you're about to say something, aren't you? You spend 700 Poké Dollars for 2 minutes of excitement and 20 minutes of waiting. It's a waste of time and money. Why did you come to the fair, then? <laughs> Thank you, Hilbert. That's quite enough. We're not on campus. You don't have any power. And you think I do on campus? I thought you were meant to be observant. Gah. So are you actually going to do anything when we get there, or just complain about what we're all doing? I'm going to look at the carnival games. You said those were rigged. They are, but I know how they're rigged. Fair enough. What about you, Cherie? What will you do? Hmm, I suppose I'll just... He glances for a moment in the rearview mirror at Bianca. You don't think anyone else saw. The cotton candy sounds nice. And what about you, Alex? Hmm, probably get some cotton candy. Ah, fuck you, Shiren. <laughs> what? Nothing came from you, Hil Hil Hilbereth? I've already made my thoughts known. Boy, has he. I just want to realize something. He really fucking hates me, Shiren does. Like, where is he? Where is he? I, I can't find him on here. Where is he? Am I blind? Blue, Silver, Leaf, Ethan, Calum, Hilbert, Serena, Sabrina... Flannery, May, Brendan. 85! What do you want from me, dickhead? <laughs> you sure? If you got killstreak rewards for every mood you've butchered, you'd have an airstrike by now. Stop talking in COD terms. This is a PG game. Okay, it's the furthest thing from PG, but okay. Hmm. You're laughing at me again. I have no intention of stopping. Going to sleep. Wake me when we get there. <laughs> cool. We're here. Hmm, already? Sure. It was only 15 miles from campus, after all. 15 miles at an average of 40 miles an hour is uh, it's about 15 minutes. 20 minutes? Give me a minute. It's twin. Hey, hey, I got this. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Like, it's fractions, right? So if you put the 15 over the 40, then that's... Wait, no, other way. 40 over 15. Then if you simplify that down, you get uh, 8 over 3. So 8 divided by 3 is... Uh... <laughs> Two hours later. I'll spare you for the rest of that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so like my phone calculator says it'll take uh, 160 hours to get here, but I think I might have done the math wrong somehow. Ooh, he's close! I think you'll get it next time. Hey, thanks! Uh, so let's see, uh, 160 hours is 2400 minutes, so... I think I'd prefer to go for another 500 bottles of beer on the wall than hear one minute of this. <laughs> Latias would agree. She loved that song. 
It's not like Hilbert to stay silent about something when someone's wrong, especially about math. What's up with him? I should probably stay out of his business. The guy's clearly got something serious going on the way he's staring at... Wait, what's he staring at? It looks like he's looking at a Ferris wheel. Um, Alex, do you have enough for tickets? Oh, uh, I think I probably do? No need. Loaf gave me a bunch of cash before we split, said to buy the tickets with that. That sounds like Leaf. You make it sound like a bad thing. I don't want to be dependent on my friends. You're not. Actually, your friends are probably a bit dependent on you. Let's quickly drop that line of thought before you end up becoming a social pariah too, Bianca. Yeah, let's get in there. All you had to do is apologize. All you have to do, Sharon. That's all you have to do. The moment that you apologize, I'm like, okay, give me some time. I'll process it and get over it. But the fact that you're just like, nah, just going to avoid the subject. I don't care. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong exposing your secrets to the entire school. Nothing whatsoever. I did nothing wrong by not speaking to you first about it. Fucking prick. Oh, God, I hate his guts. I hate his guts, guys. I want to punch him again. Give me the fuck. Fucking, come on. Fucking uppercut to the jaw this time. Give him a black eye last time. I'll break his jaw this time. So he can't give me that fucking spiel about me being an ape this time. <laughs> Wow, this is so pretty. Look, there's Argent Mountain in the distance. This is bigger than County Ferris I've been to before. Smaller than Nimbasa's theme parks, though. They probably have to keep the rides and attractions relatively smaller so that they can be bought in on trucks. Yep, but because we're so close to the city, they can probably make them bigger than the kind of country fairs you see in the countryside. Similar in size and scope to the Andela Boardwalk. Guys, are we seriously going to come to a, a country fair with games and stuff and just stand around being impressed by its logistics? Sorry, I just think it's really inspiring what people can create when they work together. I concur. The indomitable urge for collaboration is... The only urge that created this place was the urge to profit. Oh great, you're back to normal. Let's go to the games. I'll show you what I mean. No complaints here. Wait up! I wonder if I'm going to get any solo time with Shiren. Whoa. This place is pretty flashy. Oh my god, I want to go. I fuck. I have such a soft spot for arcades. I Every year when I was growing up, I used to go on a holiday to Wales. Uh, my nan bought herself uh, a caravan. Well, I say bought. She rented a caravan in a little caravan park. And the caravan park had like an on-site... Uh, had like an on-site arcade... But because my nan was trying to be responsible and my granddad was trying to be responsible, they would only let us go to the arcade on Friday nights because that was bingo night. So if I wanted to play any of the machines, I had to go on Friday night, play a bunch of bingo, and then have like an hour afterwards to do what I wanted. The one time I went in there, we played bingo. Uh, I think I broke even. I went on one of the machines, immediately won like the jackpot off of it, off of my first spin, picked up my money, walked outside, didn't go anywhere else. <laughs> I, I just walked outside, stood there, and said, Nah, I'm going home now. Walked back to the caravan and came away with like 50 pounds off of like a 10 pound budget. It was great. I bought ice cream for the rest of the trip everywhere we went. <laughs> but yeah, ever since then, I've just got a massive soft spot for arcades and casinos. I, I've been very resimble, like resilient to gambling, so I've I've never, and I don't think I'd ever like take a gambling sponsorship or anything like that. But like I've been very resilient to gambling, but I've got a big soft spot for it. So it's all about determination. I've never been to a casino in my life, but it is on my bucket list to go there. Take like 200, 300 quid into a casino and just see what happens. Like I don't know why, but I just find that so appealing. Anyway, whoa, this place is pretty flashy. And as long as you're distracted by the Flash, you aren't thinking about how the odds are stacked against you. You've talked a lot about the odds being stacked against us. Where is the proof? Look. Hilbert simply points at the bottom of a claw machine nearby, where there's a stylized R visible. This machine was manufactured by Rocket Industries. The user manual is available online. It says that the claw is only strong enough in one of every 18 plays to actually win anything. What? That can't be right. Ethan immediately pulls out his phone. Hilbert doesn't wait for Ethan to confirm or deny his assertion and keeps talking. That machine there, the one that tries to get you to make a tower of light blocks, you see it? 
Each layer increases in speed. And the last five tiles, the one that you need to match to win the Pokedex, are moving at a speed that requires a reaction time of 150 milliseconds to hit. Most people only have a reaction time of 200 to 300 milliseconds. You need to hit the button exactly a fifth of a second before there's any visual indication you need to hit it. And you need to do that five times in a row. Wait, hold on, I'm still trying to verify the first thing you said. Hilbert ignores Ethan and points at another game. You see that horizontal ladder? The rungs are just a distraction. If you step on the rungs, the entire thing will flip. You need the upper body strike to pull yourself up on the ropes alone, and the coordination to move opposite limbs at the exact same, ti exact same time. Dude! Ring toss requires you to minimize horizontal momentum, but the setup of the game makes you think that that's the end-all, be-all of velocity. Coin toss. The plates are covered in silicone spray. The coins will just bounce off, assuming that the carnies don't have an elect electromagnet underneath the plate. Balloon dust heart. Balloon dart toss. The balloons are underinflated. The darts are dull. The best prizes are on the sides of the board. Aha! What? I looked it up. Uh, yeah. Hitcher was right about the claw machines. Turns out the machine just changes the PSI every round. Alright, what was the next thing? The light tower. Oh, what? No way, man. No, those things aren't rigged. I can win them every time without fail. I don't believe that for a second, but I do want to see you try. No sweat, man. How much is this? 300 Poké Dollars? I got that. Stand aside and let the king of games do his magic. Your move! <laughs> Cripes. Leaf's gotten to him. Everyone backs away, watching Ethan with anticipation. You take a quick glance at Bianca. She seems genuinely enthralled. After that talk we had, I know she's still upset, but maybe she can put her feelings of hurt aside for a while. She's very strong. Alright, that's round five. Those are the easy ones. Uh, from now to round ten, I actually have to pay attention a little bit. Don't distract me too much. We were not talking. Dude, seriously, quiet. <laughs> Ethan's hand taps on the button in a steady rhythm, and then right before the light squares align, he taps harder freezing the square in place and continuing his game. Alright, that's round 10 complete. I could back out now and we could get a Poké Doll if anyone's interested in that. Keep going! You've done really well so far! Alright, I gotta lock in now though. Ethan's posture shifts and he leans forward, eyeball almost pressed against the glass case. Suddenly you feel a strange chill run up your spine. Absolute focus... Ethan begins to chant some strange gamer mantra. I am the mountain of... <laughs> I am the mountain of my doom. I am the chip of my Dorito. I am the cheese to my nacho. <laughs> Plastic is my body. Silicone is my blood. I have created... Ethan presses the button rhythmically. For the first time, he doesn't end up aligning the Tower of Light blocks exactly, and the new layers start to lose blocks one by one. He doesn't so much as wince at this. Is this... is this what Ethan's passionate about? He's always seemed so passive before, but this is... I mean, it looks like he's taking it really seriously. He's on the last round with three lives left. He can't possibly lose. This shouldn't be mathematically possible. Ethan's mouth curls into a cocky smile. He presses the button. And the final layer pauses right above the light tower. A perfect fit. Yes! And then, though it definitely had stopped for at least half a second before, it keeps going, one painful square after another, until the tower is completely misaligned. What? Come on, I... I... Oh well, guess I messed up at the end there. Nuh-uh! You did not. That was foul play. The machine cheated. You had that in the bag. Jeez, guys, don't you think you're going in a bit hard? I just choked, that was all. Skill issue, for real. Every single one of us saw you win that game. They must be cheating even harder than I knew. This is an absolute miscarriage of justice. We need to talk to someone about this. I bet they didn't know that the machine was broken. Naive. Hilbert's right. Someone absolutely set this up on purpose so you can win. We need revenge. 
scary. I mean, fine, we can wave someone over, I guess, but... I'm sorry, is there some sort of problem here? Yes, my companion here quite clearly won... Won... You! You motherfucker! <laughs> hmm. Shiren, it's been a while. You dare speak as though we're friends. You're so dramatic. You assaulted an innocent woman. You very nearly ruined the peace and education of an entire year's worth of Kovacon students. I would posit this is an adequate amount of drama. Please, don't pretend my brother and I were in any way at fault. We only did what you told us to. Just following orders is not an excuse, and I gave no orders. I asked for your help in learning if Alex even had a power. I did not think it necessary to state that you not burn down the school to do so. Clearly, we did not burn down the school. He is still here, and I've heard that witches too, so it seems you couldn't even do that right. First, call Sabrina that again, and you will sorely regret it. Secondly, make no mistake. I want him gone, but keeping you and your brother from Kobacon's grounds is a much higher priority. Ha! As though my brother and I would ever be caught dead on that ungrateful campus again. The quality of education has declined so fast, we're learning more from self-study than, eh, than the incompetence there could ever manage. Yes, you're clearly doing quite well for yourself. Working a job at a county fair? I suppose your parents cut you off the family credit card. That's... that's none of your business. For what it's worth, my brother is at the theater right now. Cleaning popcorn off the floor, I assume. You smug little worm. You can talk all you want, but we both know you're a complete failure. And for the record, this fair is a prestigious establishment. It's cultural outreach by the Games and Entertainment Bureau of Pazio. I don't mean to distin... <laughs> I don't mean to dis... Eh! My god, wow! Eh, I need to do my tongue warm-ups before I start playing this game. We used to do those, by the way, when I was doing uh, acting. We were told to give, like, tongue warm-ups. You basically, like, you take your tongue, and you, uh, you circle the inside of your mouth, like... And you do that at varying speeds, in one direction, then in the other, then you do one one way, then one the other way. And it was to kind of warm up your mouth so that you could be able to speak things quickly. Uh, and make sure that you just didn't do what I just did there and go blah, 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 all over the words. So maybe I should start doing that before I actually perform any kind of, like, reading on this game. It's been years since I had to do tongue warm-ups, though. I was never doing fast enough songs to really require it. But if I'm doing an hour, an hour and 20 minutes worth of uh, voice acting, I think it might be a good idea to try it. I don't mean to diminish the noble and necessary work that goes into being a carny, but being a security guard to an allotment of rigged carnival games doesn't quite give off the impression you tried so hard to project before. Certainly, my failures are tremendous, and half the school goes to sleep every night cursing my name. But they do remember it. What? I have been blamed for everything that happened. There's not a student in this school who does not hold ill feelings towards me, and yet... You, my former partner, have been entirely forgotten. I envy that, but I suspect that to be forgotten, a meaningless speed bump in the school year's journey, would aggravate you far more than any measure of success you might have had. I... I don't care at all. You're the fool, then, for taking all the blame. Ha! <laughs> at least you never lied, Alex. Don't compliment me, Shiren. A mode of praise duly withdrawn. In any case... We can exchange toothless jabs back and forth for as so long as we want, but we do have a directive. Ethan absolutely won that last game. The stacking light tower won. The pillar of light stopped entirely flush with the top row before continuing to move a second later. Ethan? Which one of you's Ethan? Ethan raises his hand. Hmm. Is what Shiren's saying true? I mean, it kind of looked like I won the game, but maybe I was a bit slow? Ethan! Ha! So even this nonsense amounts to nothing. For shame, you really are an incompetent, Shiren. Hmm. Ethan undersells himself. Everyone here will vouch for his abilities. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, but there's just no proof of what you're saying. And I know how much you love your proof, Shiren. Ha! <laughs> Actually, there is proof. I was recording the entire thing. Shiren points at the tie clip he always wears. 
Surely you didn't think that ostentatious green ornament was purely for decoration. There's a camera concealed in there. So I'm afraid we have all the proof that we need that the game is rigged. As are many of the others here, I'm sure. Perhaps you should reconsider the position you're in. The Yace Arcade attendant's eyes flit between Shiren's tie clip and the security cameras. Her hand slides towards her Pokeball. What? Don't be a fool! The foolish one here is you, making threats you don't have the power to fulfill. I'll be taking that clip. I may not have the power, but... I'll take her. I've been wanting to sell things with her anyway. Thank you. Do I not get points for that? <laughs> she got a Glyce score! Nah, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, you lost something? You give me my pink bow back now, you dickhead. Ivy's gonna fuck you up, bud. Ivy don't care about you. Ivy never cared about you. Easy. And in fact, I'm not even gonna attack it. I don't gaze it. For the meme. Oh, a pincer! Oh! Bye, pincer! Oh, a Zangus! Oh, Shroom Raver will be very happy to see a Zangus. The goose was loose, but it's been sent back to its pen. <laughs> and a throw. I'm gonna throw you in the trash, buddy. <laughs> Easy. Easy! Oh, I gained points with everyone except them two. Hilbert, Bianca, and Ethan were impressed. And Shren just seems confused. At some point, he's going to come to understand me, and all of these minus points are going to flip right back around into pluses. Well done. Shiren, I already said, don't compliment me. Noted. Compliment withdrawn. In any case, you, my old partner, once again demonstrate the lack of thought or preparation you put into your so-called plans. Truly, it's baffling intellect that looks at a party consisting of three battle team members and thinks it could take them. Ugh! You brute! Your strength proves nothing except that you're willing to throw your weight around to get what you want. And you don't even have the decency to throw around your own weight, relying on assists. You'll never succeed like that. No, I suppose not. But I can be very annoying before my final failure. Ethan, I must afraid. I'm afraid I must apologize for something. I do not have actually any proof that the machine is rigged. My tie clip is simply a piece of plastic and metal. I bought it at the student store my first day of Kobacon because the gem reminded me of Bianca's eyes. Oh. Huh? Oh, no, man, it's, uh... Ethan catches your eye. It's whatever. So, there's no proof? Nothing you can pin on the arcade? Fool! Wasting my time with your pathetic lies. Get out of here! I'm all too happy to. Um, mind if I say something? Huh? Aren't you that little blonde twerp who helped Alec, uh, helped Sharem with his pathetic campaign? And now you're with Alex. Seems like you can't stay away from losing causes. It's just, um, well, you've been saying a lot of mean stuff to my friends. Uh, what? I've been saying mean stuff? What are you... Uh, am I speaking to a toddler? So I really think you should apologize to Alex, to Ethan, and to Sharen too. You're kidding me. No, I'm actually pretty serious. I don't owe anyone an apology. If anything, Sharen should apologize to me for what he put me and my brother through. We worked tirelessly on his plan, and the moment we step outside of the box, he turns on us. Everyone deserves respect. Respect? Ha! Huh. Respect is earned, and not given freely to those who don't deserve it. Why do you get to decide who, gives, who deserves respect? Because I am superior. To you, to that incompetence, to that nepotee, and to everyone who continues to flail in that sinking ship of an academy. The waves are coming, Bianca, and I know enough to know that none of you can swim. From a psychological perspective, I think maybe you... Enough! I'm done listening to this nonsense. You can drown in your self-righteousness for all I care. Kindness costs nothing. To be kind to you would cost my dignity. I give you nothing. I shall have nothing to do with you, that incompetent schemer, that country hick, or that freak of a witch. I told you not to call her that. You have even less power over me now than you did before. Simply stay out of my way. 
Bianca's about to go fucking psycho on you. I don't think I will. What on earth are you trying to imply by that? Let's just say, if you keep disrespecting people, you might find yourself in a situation you can't handle. Are you threatening me? I've already killed one person this week. Th 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 that's ridiculous! You lie! You put a hand on Bianca's shoulder. She, she jolts a bit, surprised. Come on, she's not worth it. Let's go get you some cotton candy. You... you threaten me! This is... My mother will hear of this, you peasants! Hopefully that's the last we see of her or her odious brother, but I'm not hopeful. Those two are like the world's most annoying boomerang. Let's just try to put them out of mind. There's plenty of other fun stuff to do here. You go ahead. I want a moment. You're not going to start something, are you? You're asking that? Anyway, no. Actually, I just wanted to talk to you. Oh, sure. Everyone else can go. Oh, uh, okay, sure. So what was it? It's not your fault. Don't ever say you killed him. Don't ever say that. Because the moment you say it, even if you're just threatening someone, you start believing it. It becomes truth. And it doesn't matter if it's not true, you'll keep believing it. You can't stop. And truth starts to mean nothing to you but pain. You don't deserve that. Don't do that to yourself. And if someone reaches out, grab their hand and grab and hold on tight. Hold on like you're holding on to your own life. He'll be. That's all. I'm going now. <laughs> My heart! <laughs> Poor Bianca, man. Poor Bianca. She made a mistake and it cost someone's life. She's... <sighs> she didn't deserve that. Oh... Uh... <clears throat> Though it takes some time, the mood eventually returns to normal, and the group makes small talk as they chow down on the cotton candy. Oh my. God, Cavender's never tasted so good. Less sugar <clears throat> than a soda. That's not saying much. If soda wasn't so delicious, it would be considered abuse to give it to your child. Fuck you. <laughs> That's a bit of an exaggeration, but you really shouldn't have too much of it. Noted. Not that I do anyway, though sometimes I gather up my neighbor's cans for the 0.1 poke dollar refund. Ish, sounds rough. Nah, I was running around Palette anyway. Eventually people just put their cans in a box on their porches, and I became like a voluntary garbage man. Flabdash joined me. He usually just rode on my head though. <laughs> Little guy's really slimmed down, huh? Oh, I look at him. Heh. <laughs> He's such a critter. I want to go on the Ferris wheel. Of course. Go right ahead. Well, looks like the cabins only hold four people. How should we split it? Unovan's in one cabin, Dorm 25 in another? Might as well. I'll pass. I don't care for Ferris meals. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I'll stay down here on the ground with you then. I'm not crazy about heights myself. You could go. Don't have less fun on my account. You spent the entire drive here trying to convince us all that our fair ideas were terrible. Whatever. Besides, we should catch up more. Talk about Dorm 151. <laughs> Remember when Alex was going to call you Edgelord for the year? On second thought, maybe we should go on the Ferris wheel. Alone. And if you happen to fall out of the car... <laughs> right. <laughs> After boarding the ferris wheel, you and Sharen stare at each other from opposite sides of the cabin for ten minutes as Bianca and Yellow chat cheerfully. Jump out the damn window! <laughs> right, I just want to see what happens. I just want to see it happens. I'm going to get rid of that and say, Jump out the window. Jump out the wind. I want to see what happens. I need to see what happens. Ah! <laughs> you managed to fight back against the intrusive thoughts. Not today. Nah. Oh, okay, we're going to reload that. We're going to reload that here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to... Nod. Shiren shrugs. Wait, so if I reload again... Jump out the wind. 
If I reload again and shrug, sure and nods. <laughs> we really just don't see eye to eye, do we? <laughs> I'm just going to continue staring. There have been more awkward moments in your life, but you've struggled to think of them. Eventually, mercifully, the ride comes to an end, and you rejoin with Hilbert and Ethan, who are arguing about something in some sort of video game. Okay, that's really funny. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> you and your companions rejoin with the other group and make your way to the campus ground. Alright, let's see the damage. And what exactly are you implying by that? I'm just having difficulty imagining you toning it down a notch. Well, prepare to be pleasantly surprised. Ah, oh, You are. You walk into a moderately decorated... Modestly decorated classroom, where simple school desks have been covered with tablecloths and a moderate amount of streamers and balloons cover the ceiling. Hey, good job, Leaf. I seriously thought there was going to be like a fog machine, a disco ball, and a DJ set up here. But this is really nice. It's not overwhelming, it's comforting, and not a single Pokemon themed decoration in sight. That can't have been easy. She was really thinking about Dawn here. Hardest part was just transferring all the stuff from the battle hall in here in time. Dean Drayden helped though, so I guess he's been spared from my wrath for now. Thank goodness. Leaf, thank you so much. This is fantastic. The decorations and the room and the theater. This is the best birthday I've ever had. And we need to raise your standards a bit. But I'm glad. Um, what else do you do on birthdays? Oh, we give you presents, of course. Here at dawn, your hands are always so bright pink after you leave Instructor Melanie's classroom, so I knitted you some mittens. Oh right, carving ice sculptures must be a cold process. I should have thought of that. Oh, thank you. You knitted these? Yep, Jotonian wool. If you rub them together fast enough, they spark. That's so thoughtful. My turn, my turn. I wanted to give my new coordinated club mate a gift that can help in contests. It's really difficult differentiating yellow and may. I'm trying my hardest. I'm sorry it's not something handmade, but I just didn't have the time. So she's like Texan. Yellow's like just general southern. I think that's kind of my distinction. <clears throat> may hands dawn a sky blue box. It's a makeup set. Pokemon safe too, so you can use it on both you and your Pokemon. Oh, I, I heard they were making these in Hoenn. I didn't know that... Dawn turns the box upside down, revealing a man's very identifiable figure on the bottom. The man is nude, sitting on the floor, covered only by a wisp of aqua silk stretched strategically over his well-toned body. His expression can only be described as one that screams, Come hither. Come hither. <laughs> Hello again, Instructor Wallace. Um, yeah, yeah. It's part of Instructor Wallace's personal brand. <laughs> if you ignore the packaging, they're really great. Don't know about you, but I'm not ignoring that box. In fact, if you don't want the packaging, I'll take it off your hands. Hilda, you're embarrassing us. Us who? I'm not embarrassed. Whatever. Here's my gift. It's a choice specs. Wh what? Really? In your battle with Alex, I saw you seem to like using the same move repeatedly. Dragon Pulse. Oh. That might have been more due to a general lack of strategy in her battling than any particular preference, but it's still a nice thought. If you try that again, your moves will be more powerful with this. If you don't like it, one of my classmates, Gardenia, will buy it off of you. Orange hair, wears green, can't miss her. Sorry about him. No, no, it's fine. Ah, uh, fuck me. <coughs> No, no, it's fine. I, I love this gift. Thank you, Hilbert! Mm. Anyway, my gift isn't as fancy as his, but I hope you still like it. Hilda casually tosses Dawn a box with a white smiling van- A white box with a smiling vanillite on the cover. Dawn stumbles a bit to catch it. Hilbert said that you liked ice cream, so I got you this. It's, uh, it's one of those make your own Castelia cone kits. Sorry it's not handmade on my end either. We, uh... Shouldn't have let Yellow go first. Oh, that's fantastic. I always wanted one of these when I was a kid. My mother said I couldn't have one, though, because then I'd eat nothing but ice cream and I'd get fat. Okay, Ethan time. I've got a... With Ethan's quick thinking, you managed to steer the conversation away from the subject of Dawn's tragic childhood. 
Though Ethan, Yellow, and Leaf do have... Wait. And though Leaf, Ethan, and Yellow do have to do it one more time each before the, all the presents are handed out. During this time, you quickly slip away to the cooking club room and grab the cake you stored there. Alola! Are you here to... Sorry, just grabbing this cake and making my way back to the party. No time to chat. See ya! Ah! ah invite Mallow! Hmm. Howley. Invite her! God damn it, she's cute! In a, like, she wants, she needs friends thing. She doesn't have any friends. Not in that way. I didn't mean it like that, I promise. This is so fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. The party's not over yet, though. Alex, why don't you show Dawn what you've got? As you round the corner with the cake, candles lit, Leaf takes a deep breath, and everyone attending the birthday party immediately knows what that means. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no thank you. No thank you. Dawn blows out the candles and closes her eyes tightly, making a wish. Maybe I'll do a thing where I do everyone's voices singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> God's sake. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, I don't know what to say, but, uh, wait. Um, the candles on that cake. Yeah, sorry. I'm more a fan of cakes than that have individual candles, but the cooking club only had the numbered kind. Oh, that's not the issue. Um, it's just they say 19. Well, yeah. I just turned 18. Huh? Oh. Okay. I mean, I can run back and get some new candles, but I personally just want to eat it now, right? I... I guess. What's the issue? She seems more bothered by that than I'd expect. It's just... I still look young, right? I'm not, um... I'm not aging yet, am I? I mean, to you? Dawn, I thought you had to be 19 because you fought the strongest woman in the world. Nothing more than that. Wait. When did you fight Cynthia, then? <clears throat> I was 16. Holy shit! Dawn, slow down! Who said you had to speedrun life? My mom. Dawn, we're seriously trying here. You've got to stop shooting holes in the mood like that. Alright, who wants cake? Let's get the ceremonial birthday knife and start slicing. Aw, oh, poor Dawn. She's away from her mom. Slowly, the party unwinds, and the day ends. Everyone goes to bed contented this day, looking forward to what the future might hold. So contented you are, you go to bed early, and don't even notice when Blue eventually comes back, long after curfew. I noticed. Earlier this week, uh, when you were flirting with me. Hmm? I think I kind of remember that, sure. Well, um... You said it was a joke, and I was just curious, um, if you... Hmm? What are you two still doing up? It's the weekend, my... Uh, it's the weekend, my guy. No reason to go to bed yet. More important question, where have you been all day? You totally missed Daybreak's party. Not like I would have been invited anyway. Dawn hates me. I don't think Dawn has it in her to hate everyone, uh, to hate anyone, regardless of your history. And besides, Daybreak didn't actually invite anyone. It was all loaf. Ha! <laughs> that just seals it then. Whatever, man. Are you going to answer the actual question? I've been trying to... make friends. Uh... That's fantastic! Yellow throws her arms around Blue. What? What are you doing? Oh, I... Uh... I'm just really proud of you, Blue. Um, but going to that birthday party would have been a great way to do that, don't you think? I... Uh, maybe, yeah. Dude, did you seriously not think of that yourself? I'm new to this, lay off! And you're one to lecture me about friends. You've got the superpower that makes it easier for you, and you're still mooching off of Alex's. Hurtful and correct. Well played. Though you gotta take it easy on me too. I mean, you knew the guy for over a decade, right? Where could I even find friends that aren't already his? I mean, I've got a bunch of weirdos on the internet who know my name, but I wouldn't call them friends. Ethan! What the hell, man? I thought we were cool! I thought we were mates! 
friendship with Ethan. It's, it's over. It's over, guys. He doesn't like me anymore. He calls me a weirdo. Ethan, my dude! I was even going to dye my hair blue. And buy your cap. I was going to try and steal your fit and cosplay you at some convention. I've even been... I'll show you quickly. Ugh. I've even been working out! I bought myself a weight set to try and be more like you, Ethan. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. That's a joke. <laughs> I'm not trying to be more like Ethan. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky to find someone Alex hasn't already met yet. That why you try to hide Yellow from him? You're worried he'd take her too? N n no, that's not what happened. I'm not judging you. Maybe I should, but it's not my job and I don't work for free. I'm just saying there's another way. You don't have to see him as an enemy. Like, I get that you're frustrated he's better than you, but... He is not! But I am too, and I'm not blowing up on the guy about it. Wait, what? You're frustrated too? Of course I am. My dorm mate and best friend at this school is basically me, just better in every way. Well, I guess I've got a better sense of fashion. Anyway, that'd frustrate anyone. I'm not a saint. But it's not like the guy brags about it or anything. All he ever does is try to help people. It's annoying! Yellow does the same thing. You seriously think she's annoying? Of course not! There you go, then. Compared to Alex and I, you're practically a stranger. I don't know why I'm even listening to you. Sometimes, being so close to the problem, you can't tell what it actually is. It helps to keep the issue at arm's reach. If you can avoid getting invested, it doesn't matter what happens. Though it's obviously too late for that, for you. You're... You're different than I thought you were. You're exactly who I thought you were. Ha! <laughs> Bleh! Eve! Ah, <laughs> oh, Blue's making friends. A small handful of foreverals drops out onto the sweet's floor. Blue's Evie chirps disgruntledly, blinking sleep out of its eyes. Oh. You can do that too, huh? Guess that explains all this. My bad. I thought we were getting somewhere. But wait Hold on! That, that wasn't... Whatever, man. After Nathaniel, I should have known no one would talk to me unless they wanted something. Guess I'm just waiting to find out what Alex wants at this point. Blue, that was cruel. C come on! Wait, Yellow, please! I had no idea that Evie was gonna throw up those rocks. I don't even really get how it works! I just know that I need to talk to people, and... 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 I can't keep doing this. I'm tired. I'm so tired, Blue. I've been trying so hard, Blue. I've been trying so hard to get you to show that you're a better person, and it's exhausting. Every inch of progress is something I have to fight for, for ages. And I hate fighting. But... but I didn't mean... I need... I need you to try harder. I know there's good in you, I've seen it. But saving me one time doesn't mean I'm going to try and save you for the rest of your life. Doctors get sick too. Wait! I promise this wasn't just about getting stronger. I mean, yeah, that's what I've been trying to do all week, but that's why I've been staying away from everyone in this dorm. I screwed up with Alex, but... Blue. I can't care. No. Okay, I actually feel really bad for Blue. He's an asshole, but my god, that was so unfortunate. He was having a genuine conversation, a genuine moment with Ethan. Oh, poor guy. He didn't mean that. He genuinely didn't mean that. Oh. God damn. <laughs> Welcome back. How was your run? Alright, rained a bit last week. I think so, the grass was really mushy. Got my shoes all dirty. Figured I'd scrub them off before heading back out to polite company. You know, if you want a new pair, you can just ask. I know, but you know what I'd say to that. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be dependent. 
Save them for my birthday. Alright. Well, on the topic of things you're going to do for me... That's a hell of a segue. My heart just went from zero to a hundred. I'm pretty sure neither of those numbers are healthy. Anyway, do you mind if I finish? Go ahead. Weren't we meant to be going somewhere? Doing something? I mean, after flying across an ocean to get me, I kind of figured you'd be pushing this date harder. She's backing out. So, when you were a kid, did you rip into your snowfall day presents as soon as you woke up, or did you sort of dance around them from hours trying to predict what was inside? Huh? Well, we didn't have a lot of presents on snowfall day, so I wanted to make them last. I'm not sure I'd say I danced around them, but yeah, I made them last. Opened one every few hours. Well, there you go. Oh, I'm flattered. Anyways, I should be able to get things sorted sometime next week. How's Wednesday sound? I'll have to clear my schedule. I've got high team with the queer I've got high tea with the Queen of Galar booked then, but I can probably shuffle some things around. Very gracious of you. I'd say it'd be worth the wait, but if Dawn's birthday was any indication. Dawn's birthday was great. She loved it. That was a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what I can do, Skippy. I was operating at level five there. I'm level eighty at least. Yeah, Dawn does like her level differences. Dork. <laughs> I'm going out. See you later. See ya. <clears throat> Alright, free day! Have we got any... We got Skylar... Hilbert! Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Now we got a question to, to answer here. Do we, as a game, do we want to do Hilbert... Or do we want to do Skylar? I think we're going to do Hilbert, because we did Hilda in the last episode, and it'd be funny to have a chat with him. Next scene, meet on the mountain. I don't know what that means. Anyway, Ethan is there? Is Ethan there? Yeah, Ethan is there. Wally, Silver... Where's Sharen hang? Oh, there he is. I want to go and hang around with Sharen. <laughs> go to cooking club, study, access the PC. Yeah, let's let's do let's do Hilbert. Let's do Hilbert. You want to find Hilbert? Yeah, let's go looking for Hilbert. You're in Innsbruck when you come across Hilbert standing frozen, staring at a statue. His unmoving body cuts through the waves of people splitting around him like the hull of an icebreaker, uncaring of the flow of humanity all around. Hey, Hilbert. Hmm? Oh. It's you. Warm as ever. Checking out the modern art? No, this is classical art. Pre-Renaissance. Medieval. Wait, isn't Copacan a really new region? Just a couple hundred years? Hilbert rolls his eyes and wordlessly points at the plaque on the bottom of the statue. You take a better look at the statue. It's composed of iron and appears to be of a knight, sword upraised and mouth frozen in an eternal rallying cry. The Dark Knight's feet is a child, swaddled up in the knight's discarded cape. In memoriam of the sacrifices required to free Unova of kings. Let Cobacon benefit. Paid for by the Unova Heritage Association. <laughs> hmm. A gift from Unova. More like a reminder of what Cobacon owes them. <clears throat> you think they gifted Inspira the statue just to remind people that Unova is nearby and very powerful? I think anyone with a map would remember that one. People don't remember anything that isn't in their face. Hilbert's voice is thick with bitterness. Do you want to talk? How long were we roommates? You know this. Obviously, I don't want to talk. Right. What if I wanted to talk? I would not be surprised. Has anyone ever told you you're a chatty gossip, Alex? Yeah. Blue. Has anyone ever told you that you need to work a bit harder at getting along with people? Yes, Hilda. That checks out. So what's your story with her? It really... <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> that messed up my throat. It really is impossible to turn you off, isn't it? Kinda, yeah. Fine. Let's go somewhere to sit down, though. I can't stand up any longer. Yo, let's go to Burger Kingler. Let's go to Taco Bell Sprout. I've just realized there's a sign there that says do not battle indoors. How long's that been there for? Yeah, let's go let's go to Burger Kingler. Peering closer at Hilbert, you do notice that he's starting to sweat quite a bit in the cool air, as though he was physically overexerted. 
Uh, sure. A friend of mine has a house here. Wanna go there? It's a bit more shaded. How far? Uh, about two miles. That's a long walk. It's like 15 minutes tops. You can do it. It's two miles. In order to get there in 15 minutes, we need to walk at eight miles an hour. The average walking speed is three miles per hour. If you... You begin walking away. Wait! Wait, no, come back! I wasn't... You make your way to Silver's house, Hilbert in hot pursuit. Every time he gets within 10 feet of you, he attempts indignantly to explain through his laboured breathing why this walk is in fact too long. Of course, he never gets the chance. By the time he's regained his breath enough to speak, you've already moved 30 feet away from him, using your long legs and not utterly ignored mis musculature to your advantage. You sneak a peek over your shoulders at his small form hurrying after you, and you can't help but smirk. He's actually kind of cute, when he isn't talking anyway. Ugh. 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 Don't s- Ugh. See? Told you you could make it. And I told you that it was too long a walk. Where are we? A friend's house. Your friend lives in a shack in the middle of the city? We can't all live in palaces, Prince von Schwarzdrachen. What? Oh, I just called you- No, I knew what you said. Why did you say that name? I don't know, man. Sorry if I crossed the line. I was just poking fun at you since you were acting kind of princely. Tch. That's what my mother used to call me. Aurea? No. Professor Juniper is my guardian. My mother. Uh, Hilda? God. <laughs> Sorry, Hilbert. I don't think you've ever mentioned your mother before. I thought I had. I suppose I forgot. Well, now's as good a time as any, right? She's dead. Oh. Father is dead too. Oh. They were murdered. Right in front of me. Oh. And I swore on that day that I would kill the one responsible. Oh. Wait. Kill? Yes. Not find or bring to justice or even punish? No. Kill. Revenge is my ideal. I've no interest in the truth. That's pretty heavy, man. It's the only thought that's occupied my mind for many years. I've been plotting, hating, dreaming of when I could get my revenge. I've been wallowing in darkness to the point that dark, the cold, has become my own bitter blade. Ow! I just cut myself on all the edge! Uh... The dragon of the meteor will fall at my hand, and then if there is a life left for me, I guess I'll go to prison. What? The dragon of the meteor? He can't be talking about Tia, can he? No, he's talking about Kyurem. You don't seem phased. Honestly, I'm just not sure how to react. This is a lot you're dropping on me. Do you see why I don't talk now? Can you imagine what it's like trying to have friends, have a normal conversation when you've been planning a death ever since you were 12? I despise how easily it comes to you. I loathe that you made me trust you when you knew full well what power you had. Hilbert, I didn't know about Frenergy until a couple of weeks into the year. And when you found out, did you tell me about it? Did you tell anyone? No. Of course, of course you can't can go. Huh? The only person I've shared my dream with is Nate, and he's got enough problems that my dream didn't even phase him. But you're different. You're kind. You can't just shrug this off like he can. I shouldn't have told you. You made me trust you, and I resent you for that. Someone with my dream can't afford to trust. Hilbert? Yes. I... I can't begin to understand the pain you're going through, but... Killing isn't the answer. Then what is? Forgiveness? Living well? Uh, I'd try just talking it out with the person you've got a vendetta against. Whatever. When you see everything with blackened eyes, the world looks dark. Living well is impossible. Look, Hilbert, I... am bored of this conversation. Where did you get that hat? Huh? Your hat. It looks like a first edition Pokemon League Expo hat. It's probably a counterfeit though, since they were only on for a limited run. Oh, uh, Old Man Oak gave it to me. Uh, Professor Oak, I mean. 
Can I see it? Sure. You hand over your hat. Hmm. This is the official seal of the Cantonian Pokemon League. Huh? Is that valuable? Why are you hiding underneath the table? Oh, uh, just tying my laces? Really? Because it looks to me like you're trying to hide your head. Nope, I'm not. <laughs> Whatever. Take the hat back. Thanks. Right, I had a massive problem with one of the uh, thumbnails recently because I loaded in the red model that has his hat, his hat off. <laughs> and it looked very weird. It looked very, very weird. <laughs> Thanks. But really, what was that about? There were exactly 748 of those hats in existence. They were manufactured in 1989. They were the last Cantonian League Expo hats ever made. This is because mid-manufacturing, Lance won his 34th attempt at beating the Kanto League, and the Kanto League Expo was merged with the Johto League Expo in the Indigo League Expo. These hats were given away as novelties at the Expo, along with their Johto counterparts, which had finished their production run and numbered in the thousands. These hats, mementos of a single significant moment that could never be replicated, were just given away, alongside the new first edition Indigo League hats, which are now a dime a dozen. Of that cancelled run of Cantonian League Expo hats, 516 are in the hands of private collectors, 102 are in museums, Lance owns three and gave one to Janine, and the rest are unaccounted for. Wait, so you're telling me this hat is really valuable? It could be. Hilbert snatches the hat off your head and gestures at its insides angrily. If you hadn't soiled it with your greasy hair and your, your dandruff... Hilbert tosses the hat back to you. No, this really matters. Like, how valuable was it before I used it for ten years? Easily one million five hundred thousand pokey dollars. Oh no. And how much is it worth now? After ten years of use? Seventy thousand pokey dollars maximum. Oh, I could have been rich. Ugh. I'm actually glad we had this talk. At least now you appreciate your damn hat more. It physically pained me seeing you going to bed every night with it on. You didn't even put it on the nightstand or anything. Hey, did... Did you watch me sleep? I watched everyone in that room sleep. You're not special. Sorry if this is a dumb question. Just don't ask it. No, I'm going to ask it. Why did you watch us sleep? I'm scared of the dark. Watching you four sleep reminded me that I'm not alone. I do the same thing in my new dorm. What? What is wrong with your ears? Is that, like, really dry sarcasm? You mean the lowest form of wit? No, it's not. Tch. This whole conversation has been a damn waste of time. Now I've forgotten why I even came to Inspire in the first place. I think I know. Then keep it to yourself. You're serious about wanting to kill the one responsible for your parents' death? I would die for it. Attendance in Cobacon just gives me the power and resources I need to make it happen. I can't let that happen. For your safety. But I'll help you find the one responsible, if you can tell me about them. I accept your help. Whoa. That easily? Your power affords you... communicative ability. I'm not in any position to be turning down help from those who can provide it. Besides... You're competent. I would welcome your aid as my compatriot. That's... Oh, he just walked away. Well, I don't much like the sound of compatriot. Before I get back to campus, I should probably swing by a store. I can think of a little present Hilbert might appreciate. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, me too, mate. When Hilbert returns to his room later, he finds a little box on his nightstand. Opening the box, he seems a small vanillite shaped object. Turning it over, its form and function becomes apparent. It's a nightlight. Hilbert wordlessly plugs it in. When were you there? In the dim light, you may be able to make Were you there in the dim light, you may be able to make out the traces of a smile. It seems he appreciates his light. Whatever the case, Hilbert's behaviour certainly becomes more tolerable. 
raising the morale of all of his dorm mates. Ah, from dorm mate to light, hanging out with Hilbert will now convey to me to steel, ice, and ghost types. This amount will grow the more points you have with Hilbert. And we got Hilda for Everalls, Marini, Varum, and Aaron. And that's it. Cool. Right, noon. I would do the Skylar event, but I think I'm going to save that for next episode. And now I think I'm going to get in some time studying. We're going to study. And we're going to study some Dark type. Silver's in the library. Contact someone else. Dark Collective 2. Hilda or Serena. Nah, let's do it with let's do it with silver. Yeah, let's study with silver. You spent some time studying dark Pokemon with silver. Plus two. Nice. Your dark proficiency increased. We can now reach level 16. Well we we're already at level 16. Barra's I was oh he's level 15. How much do we get for studying then? Do we get 0.5? I think we get 0.5. We get half a level for studying. Okay. And then in the evening. Let's go see you talk business. Let's talk business. Hey, uh, you're looking good. I'm ready to talk business. Manage investments. Your total investments come oh, for a basic increase. And the stores say they'll be stocking some new materials when it's 150 more. We'll make that by the next day. You can always speed that up by increasing your investment. Increase your investment by 2,193. She's not going to accept this, is she? <laughs> Damn it. Okay, at least we get the, the time back. At least we get the time back. Uh, I guess we'll just go... Can I find yellow anywhere? Yeah, find yellow in the student center. Let's go hang out with yellow for a bit. Yellow is hard at work. Oh no, stop it. Uh, I wanna hang out with people. I just wanna hang out, guys. I just wanna hang out. Let's find blue. Wanna find blue? Yeah, let's hang out. Hell yeah, plus three. Chicory gained some XP. Nice. And now it's night. Text someone before we go to bed. Who we text him? I'm going to text Nate. Because we're very close to getting him to the next level. Just thought I'd text. How you doing? Hey, we shouldn't talk too much on civil lands. There's basically no encryption here. But I appreciate you texting me anyway. <laughs> Midnight. Ooh. See, that's the model that I, I took. The model of him without his hat on. It pisses me off because I just couldn't get it to work properly in Photoshop. I couldn't get the eyebrows properly, and it just ended up looking weird. It's my fault exactly, but, like, damn it. Swear to God, if that's Leaf trying to organize a midnight booty call. Oh, who am I kidding? That'd be great. Yeah? It's me. Whoa, well, that woke me up. Didn't expect that. What's up? I won a battle. Jeez, Blue, we battled last week. We're rivals. We should be battling every day. I thought I was your listener. If you are, then listen to me when I say we need to battle. Oh, I don't know. It's late. Curfew's up. We can't battle in the suite. It's too small. We'd have to go out and then Sharem would catch us. Look! Look, I screwed up yesterday. Ethan and Yellow are mad at me. I still haven't talked to Gramps. Not once all week. I'm confused, and I don't know how to make friends, and now that I'm trying, people think I'm just doing it to get the damn kidney stones. And I am, but not towards the only people that Eevee's actually created the stones for. Wait, so earlier this week when you gave me the Soothe Bell, you were actually trying to patch things over? And then the Eevee threw up the stones, and I didn't know what to do but pick them up and leave. I was trying to be the bigger man, but then you had to screw up my plan by apologizing to me. That must have been very hard for you. Thank you! Finally, someone who's reasonable about this stuff. Nate might have fried Blue's brain with that memory wipe. This isn't the Blue I remember at all. So, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm frustrated and everything's working. Everything I'm working on is failing and I need to get back to what I'm good at. Beating you! <sighs> Where were you planning on battling? We can't go to the battle hall at this time of night. Recreation Center. There's a pool there for faculty they never use. It's open at night, too. Come on! Fine, but I want to be thanked. What? You heard me. There's a serious chance we'll be busted for this. That might screw up my scholarships, which I seriously need. 
I'm going to risk all that for you at 1am in the morning. I'm going to need you to at least acknowledge it. Yeah, fine. Cool. You can thank me after I beat you. Ha! <laughs> Fair chance! Just give me a second to get changed. You and Blue quickly make your way from the dorm room to the recreation center pool, loudly whispering at each other to make less noise. Jeez, I think this pool is even nicer than ours. Not happy about how bright it is though. Electric costs aside, we're pretty lit up. I don't want to stay here for too long. It's fine. Won't take me long for me to beat you. Come on, no more chatting. Let's do this. Right, we're leading with Aurora, who is actually named correctly. It's it's not an intentional misspelling. What it is, is it's supposed to be a reference to the beauty brand Aurora Beauty, because Ninetales is supposed to be a fairly conventionally attractive Pokemon, as well as being the Aurora Borealis. I mean, Aurora Veil is literally one of its moves, and it was on the set when I was naming it. I could see it was there. It was supposed to be a double entendre. God damn it. <sighs> uh, anyway. Win or lose. I'm getting my thanks, right? What? Yes! Why are you so fixated on this? It's just words. Believe it or not, I actually care about what you say. Aw. You can't throw me off like that. Whatever, man. Flobodosh, time to wake up. We've got a battle to do. Because... I don't want a battle. It's 1am, Dad. <laughs> Don't suppose you'd be willing to tell me what the Foreverals your Eevee made you... Don't suppose you'll be willing to tell what the uh, Foreverals your Eevee made do? Oh, you'll find out. Fair enough. Well, you've got three sets of Foreverals to choose from now. Okay, Pidgeotto's level 25. I'm just going to Aura Beam it. Sand attack. Damn it, you bastard. Okay. Alright, I'm going to switch out at some point. Here we go, Eevee. Just like I practiced. Use your new ability, Tetra Element. Ooh. This is the Eevee Divril. It's not apparent how one obtains it at this time. When equipped to the appropriate Pokemon, it grants Tetra Element. When used on the appropriate, it can lead... Oh my god, what? Wow. Okay. Um, I'm in trouble. Uh, Ivy, get out there. It's changing form. It learned Flare Blitz. And Flare Blitzed me. What the fuck? Okay, uh, I can't let Ivy die. Because Ivy's like my ace. So I think I'm going to go out into Brutus and just let Brutus go down. Sand attack. Yep, that's fine. We might as well no retreat. Cool. And now hopefully we can hit it with a power-up punch. Nope. Can we hit it with a power-up punch? Nope. Can we hit it with a power-up punch? <laughs> we can. <laughs> Can we hit it with another one? Yes, we can. And a third one? Nope. We need another one. It's just sand attacking me. Why are you sand attacking me? Come on, Brutus. Let's go. Are you about to kill it, Brutus? <laughs> Why is it sand attacking me? Come on. Come on, Brutus. I believe in you. I believe in you, buddy. You've got this. Yes! <laughs> yes, Brutus! Et tu, Brutus! Wait, Eevee lost? He lost? Damn it. But this fight's not over yet. I've got more Pokemon left, and as long as I have one, I can win this. I'm sure you can, buddy. It burnt me. <laughs> wow, that's just fucking... That's just rude. Alright, Flobodosh. You're electric type at the moment. So you're gonna switch in your nozzle. Cool, alright. Power up punch. Yep, just keep power up punching. Ah, okay. We've just gotta keep hitting. We've gotta weaken this thing as much as we can because I don't really have anything that can take it on. Barrow can come in and click uh and shroud, I guess. Nice. Now we can pursuit. Ah, oh, it burnt me anyway. God damn it. Pursuit. Another one will take it out, at least. Oh, no, it won't, because it's in fucking blaze range. Beautiful. Okay, Ivy. Uh, get out there, I guess, and drain and kiss it to death. Bit of health back off. That's nice. Do it again. It's ingrained. Okay. Ardent gaze it. 
It only hit once and then got infatuated. That's cool. Okay. Uh, I think we just got a draining kiss to get that health back as much as we can. One more will kill, but I'm actually going to take this time to set up a growth. And now we drain the kiss once more, so we've got a bit more power to us. Back to full health. Gyarados. Okay. A leech seed it for now. Bounce. Growth. Oh, that hurt. Okay, drain kiss. It's going to bounce again. Growth. Oh, it really stings. Drain kiss. Ivy. I love this thing. Screw you, Blue. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Are you laughing at me, or...? You won! Even now, even with Eevee, you still won! Guess I was worried over nothing. This Eevee isn't some end-all, be-all Supermon like I thought. It's just a regular Pokemon that can win or lose like everything else. Guess I can talk to Gramps about this after all. As soon as I tell him it lost to your Pikachu, he probably won't give it a second thought. I am so confused as to what he wants. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm only saying this because you forced me to, but uh, thanks. Aw. Anyway, let's get out of here. Your battle style is so showy, you've probably called the entire disciplinary committee on our asses. Sure, blame my Pokemon's moves and not your constant yelling. Hey, this place is completely soundproof. Don't... Yep. Huh? Did someone just bark? Shh, we gotta... Oh crap, I think they heard. Sounds like there's someone else here. Behind the bleachers there. Hey, who's there? Why? Why you, you two live together? You don't need to sneak out to do what you're doing. <laughs> you fucking horn dogs. Hey bros, fancy uh, seeing you two here. Didn't know you guys were like that. I <laughs> guess, uh, guess you didn't see the warning, huh? Like that? Warning? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, I guess you don't know. It's weird, most people don't know about this place unless they know the full story. I have a terrible feeling I know where this is going. What do you mean, this place? Stop being so damn obtuse and just speak straight. Blue, how did you learn about this place? Nate told me this place is where a couple of guys could go at night and make a lot of noise in private. Yep, now I see it. I get it now. Oh boy. What? What is it? Explain, damn you! Only you could hear that and immediately think of Bantlin' Blue. What? What is it? What am I missing? Okay, Brew. Here's the deal. Only Instructor Wallace uses a faculty pool, and he comes here exactly once a week, on Monday nights. All the rest of the times, uh, students... Uh, usually in pairs. Sometimes in groups. Sometimes in groups. Come here to, uh... Well, make love. Oh! And the shoe drops. Yeah, so that's how it is. Uh, people hang their uniforms ties on the handle to the building to let anyone else know that it's occupied. I, uh, I didn't see yours. I sculled this place out earlier and saw two high ties hanging on the doors. I thought they were just lost, so I, uh, I put them in lost and found. Ah, damn. We'll have to get them back tomorrow, then. Make us some story about how we dropped them. Well, that's alright, man. You didn't know. Wait. That means Nate was flirting with me. He flirts with everyone, dude. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> you don't say. I ship it. <laughs> Nate and Blue. Shut up, Nate! If, if any of you have ever seen the show Shameless, at least the American version, there's a, a character in it called uh, Mikhailo Malkovich, who's basically some fucking, like, scutter, gutter rat. Like, he's... His family are complete white trash, like, 
white supremacists, like horrible scum of the earth people. But the son, Mikhailo Malkovich, is he's homosexual, he's gay, and he's in a relationship with one of the main characters from the Gallagher family. Uh, I can't remember his name, Ian Gallagher? Yeah, Ian Gallagher. Uh, and they have, they'd have a sort of similar dynamic going on. Ian would be Nate, and uh, Mickey would be Blue. Because Mickey just insults him all the time, and says the most horrific things ever, but then actually gets like super like sentimental when it comes to Ian. It's quite, it's quite a love-hate relationship, but there's actually like an undertone of love. It was very sweet, I like it. Anyway, now you know the story of uh, the faculty pool, so I guess you can tell other people who might be interested. Since this is a one-year academy, there aren't any seniors to fill us in on this kind of stuff, so we'll have to learn all these mysteries and traditions on our own. Quick question, though. Where did you learn this from? Well, don't tell anyone this, but Brawley, Faulkner, and Roxanne often come here, and Brawley told Brendan. Yeah, we're out running in the fields when he just casually dropped this knowledge bomb on me. But hey, like May said, don't tell anyone. My lips are sealed. Even the former student council? How deep does this conspiracy run? Don't stress about it. Anyway, if our ties are gone, we probably shouldn't stick around here any longer. I guess we'll be heading out. Thanks for the info. I'll keep it in mind. Psh! Like you'd ever be able to bring a girl here. Who said it has to be a girl? All I'm hearing is that you've got at least two genders who are going to reject you. Oh, burn! And all I'm hearing is that you thought Nate's flirting was him giving you a hot tip on a battle spot, so really, who's got less game? Your bickering continues as you sneak back to the dorm, avoiding campus security and disciplinary committee's patrols. <laughs> oh, God. You think. Meanwhile, not too far away. Drayden, you're being unreasonable. No, Miss Annabelle, I am finally behaving as reason dictates. You must close down the school. The children are in danger. There are no children at this school, miss. Only young men and women. If we were to disrupt their learning now, it could be catastrophic for their grades, their futures. That's not even touching on how furious the parents would be. Do you know how much a single hour of tuition at Kobacon costs? No, but I don't see... Too damn much. Bad word. I... You're right. I'm sorry. I'll put a coin in the jar. I'm not suggesting you close the school without compensating the students, the parents. Just send them a bill for the classes they've taken, then invite them back when we've ensured the school is safe. Your work with the International Police has made you forget common ways of life. I cannot simply send them a bill. Many students are relying on the six months before tuition is due to pay it. In any case, what you're suggesting simply wouldn't be allowed by the board. They are a flock of vultures, but I happen to agree that, in this case, closing Kobocom would do far more good than harm. Why aren't you listening? My agent was attacked. I am just as concerned about that as you are. He is my student, in addition to your agent. I would not... Hmm. No, not black number two. I'm referring to the truck driver, the one who was transporting the specimen. I find your callous disregard of Nathaniel's plight upsetting. It's just neat. And he's our best agent. He's never been so much as scratched, but the truck was attached en route to the airport. Was attacked en route to the airport, and the specimen inside is still unaccounted for. It will return to Kobacon. To guarantee everyone's safety, you must send everyone home. It is interesting. This appeal to safety you've brought up. But I think perhaps you're not being entirely truthful with your intentions. What? Well, from a logical standpoint, there is no safer place than Kobocon. The best trainers in the world are here. Why, I could shout champion and no less than three people in any given room are liable to look at me. So part of my suspicions, but this appeal to safety feels, to me, like an argument you make only because you think it will appeal to me. Unnecessary, of course. If you want the school shut down for a different reason, we can talk of what your true reason is. Though I am no less reticent to acquiesce to your plea, it must be said. May we speak in private? So this performance was for my daughter's benefit as well? Noted. In any case, there's nothing you can tell me that I would not share with my daughter after, so I see no reason for further privacy. Okay, here's the truth. 
When Azoth-1 returns, it will almost certainly do so in a very public fashion. The transport truck was attacked. That's proof enough that there are bad actors who seek the specimen's power. We have eyes on them. We want to hide the existence of Azoth-1 at all costs. I cannot do that in a public, insecure location such as the middle of this school. It appears our philosophies are at odds. I would protect people by educating them as to the threat and giving them the tools they need to fight it. And you, it appears, would protect them by hiding the threat, handling it in the shadows. Your ideal is noble. It befits an educator. That society stands on the tip of a needle. People need their peace of mind to keep going. So little of you has changed, Annabelle. Even when you were a student, you too wanted to shoulder the world's burdens. Your intermittent relationship with time and space has not changed your heart as much as your body, I see. I may consider an evacuation of the campus for up to two days, but I would have you tell me, and your Nova's champion, what you know before I agree to anything. That's... fair. Okay. Tell us then. What is it that has the International Police so concerned? What do we have to fear? Eternity. Eternitus, baby! Hello. <laughs> Who is that? And what? Wait, if you want your save to be compatible with the next version, then press back at the bottom of the screen and save before this dialogue box shows up. Okay. Huh. I repeat, as of this text box, it is too late to save your game. You must reverse. Alright, let's continue. That was it? Did anyone feel like this week was weirdly uneventful? You only thought that because you were barely there. <laughs> and is social much? No, I'm serious. What even happened this week? Bianca's old man got off, big loss there, and we went to class? Not every week needs to end with a confrontation for the fate of the school against a minor god. Sometimes this Academy Life game is going to actually focus on the Academy Life part. You know, dates, tests, same old. Ha! <laughs> you sure there's gonna be any dates? You said you'd do it next week, but at this point I'm pretty sure Yellow and I will go on a date first. Not after one de what went down on Saturday night. What? Don't say that. It's just part of the script. We'll make up, you know. You know what? Mark my words. First thing next week, I'll hand out some gifts. Spend some time with Ethan and Yellow, and it'll be like none of this bull ever happened. It might not be that easy. Pfft, what do you know? I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who can see the social screens, so... A good bit? Whatever. Let's just do the outro. The demo ends here, but there's currently a lot more under development and on the way. As the game goes on, the choices you make will have even more impact. We barely scratched the surface. Pretty sure that's not true anymore. Your choices will determine who you meet. And you can't just find everyone right away. Uh, there's probably a bunch of people you haven't met in the elective, so um, if you want to go back and do that... Sometimes it comes down to your choices, and sometimes you just need to be patient. Uh, I'm not really sure how to say this, but uh, good luck! You can check on development updates via the official Discord or Poke Community Forum. Or if you prefer social media, follow the Pokemon Visual Twitter account or shoot a message to the YouTube channel. There are a few other platforms that might bear the project's name, a Facebook or a website for example. But you won't get shit from those, we don't even own them anymore! Just jump on the Discord, alright? Here's the link, again if anyone missed it the first time. Link is in the description of my video if you want to actually uh, do the thing. Make sure you report any bugs or anything weird in general. You can reach out to the creator with the previous links. Or you can send him an email to the email there. Suggestions are also more than welcome, by the way. Thanks for playing! Wow. I actually reached the end of a Pokemon Academy Life uh, de demo for once. This is the first time in a long time since the very first official one happened. Hey guys, I'm here to do- <coughs> I'm here to do the outro. Guys? Maybe I'm early? 
Nope. You're not. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Let's just sit back and watch the credits, shall we? Let's let them all play in their entirety. And while they play, I've got to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has been watching along with this series. Massive thank you to absolutely every single person who has been watching and following along and all of that good stuff. You're all amazing people. And as you can see, this game is still very much in development. So when a new week drops, of course, we will hop back in and play some. It is a massive, massive pleasure to be able to play this game. Uh, I have had multiple conversations with the developers and the artists, and they are incredible, incredibly hardworking people, and I love every single one of them. They are just brilliant. And yeah, it's, it's just fantastic to be able to be a part of this and, you know, keep it going for you guys. So when there is a new update, I will of course come back, but for now, I'm not sure how to proceed. I might take a few days off to think about it, a few days off just to kind of, uh, you know, work out my next my next steps and yeah we'll see how we're going but yeah thank you very much guys and uh yeah <laughs> kind of expected to see myself in those credits but it makes me sad to not be in there maybe next time maybe next time but for now i think we're about to be thrown back to the main menu maybe yep there we go and ladies and gentlemen that is it for Pokemon Academy Life Forever. For now. For now. Because this game does still keep going. So, I will catch you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. And look after yourselves. Bye-bye.